Hey, what's up? Good evening, everybody. Welcome along. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Glasgow Airport and uh, our life-saving service today in Helimed 02. We're in Golf, Golf, Sierra, Alpha, Sierra. My name's 104th Maverick. I'll be your host tonight, the host with the most and a burnt bit of toast. For those of you who don't know me, I am a content creator on YouTube and Twitch who mainly focuses on military flight simulators such as DCS. I also fly Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've done a lot of Concorde stuff before in the past. Some of you might know me from flying Concorde. Um, I do a lot of helicopter stuff um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator now. Doing the HEMS things is one of my favorite things to do. So today I'm going to be showcasing to you the um, random and everywhere a heli rescue mod that we have for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're working in conjunction with the fantastic Airbus 145 from the Hype Performance Group. So we're going to be taking off on VATSIM. We are live on VATSIM at the moment. I don't think we have any ATC here um, right now, but hopefully we'll get some ATC further on in the flight and I can show you guys just how we operate a, a helicopter around about on VATSIM and how we use the real world procedures to uh, navigate around the the country that we're flying in and deal with the air traffic and services that we are talking to. So I've got a lot of people saying hello to me on YouTube. Hello guys, I hope you're all well. Welcome to the show. Hello to everybody over on Twitch as well. Welcome on board folks, welcome. Like I said, we're at Glasgow Airport here. We are at the Gamma Aviation Facility here at Glasgow Airport at the Scottish Ambulance Service Facility. This is where this aircraft is based in real life, Helimed 02. It's a slightly different um, registration that's based here. I believe it's Golf uh, India Sierra Alpha Sierra that's here. We're in Golf Golf Sierra Alpha Sierra. As you can see, she's a beautiful ride. Uh, the fantastic Airbus 145 that we're going to be flying in today. So if you like helicopters and you like saving lives, then you're in for a treat today, guys. Hopefully we're going to be able to save some patients and uh, get them to hospital. One of the cool things about this mod is the animations that we get with it are fantastic. You're going to see a lot of animations around the aircraft, um, inside and outside the aircraft, and also on the ground as well once we get to incidents and things. We'll be able to see some casualties on the ground, some emergency services, some police vehicles and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are liking helicopters and uh, Helimed emergency services, then this is going to be the stream for you. So let's just have a quick play with the... Um, mod to getting this up and running here and we'll get ourselves going I'll be as quick as I can right oh, thank goodness track IR worked there that was a mild panic attack thinking that track IR wasn't going to work so we'll get up and running now I'm trying my best to keep up with the YouTube chat guys but unfortunately there's a lot of you all saying hello and some different things hello to everybody I hope you're well if you have any questions about uh, flying helicopters or, or operating them or just anything really from the sim, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. I will try and answer as many questions as I can. Um, but because there's so many of you wonderful people watching, I might not be able to get to them all, but I certainly will do my best. I am a student helicopter pilot. I'm training to be a helicopter pilot in real life. Um, the aircraft I fly is not as fantastic as this one, unfortunately, but I fly the Cabri G2 in real life, which some of you may recognize from Microsoft Flight Simulator as one of the default aircraft that we have in here. Right, so the new uh, mission is a car crash which has led to the injury of persons. Ambulance, police and fire rescue teams are on scene. They have started to extract and rescue casualties. Chest pain, whiplash, head trauma and uh, hemorrhagic shock are reported. A HEMS medic is required as soon as possible. So what we can do with this uh, mod that we're using, we can actually select exactly where we want the incident to take place. So we'll go ahead and do that using our map here. And just before I select that, I want to have a quick look outside because I want to show you guys the fabulous animations that we have going on around the aircraft. We can actually see the um, medical crew coming out towards the helicopter and they'll be getting their cells prepped up. They'll also come to the rear of the aircraft and check that we have all the appropriate emergency medical equipment on board. So we see the two crew members have got in. This is our um, flight surgeon here coming in at the back. And what he'll do is he'll come to the back door and just make sure that all the equipment is on board that, that should be on board. Right, 
we're going to leave him to do his checks and we will go ahead and select somewhere where we want the accident. One of the things I love most about Microsoft Flight Simulator is showcasing the fantastic scenery that we have in Scotland. So I'm going to take you guys up to the Scottish Highlands. We're going to be going just north of Loch Lomond up to a very beautiful place just outside the town of Tindrum, which as some of you may know has, has had a bit of a gold rush. There's, there's gold up here. There's gold in them there hills, guys. So what we'll do is we'll put the instant on the A82 just north of Tindrum and Glen Orkey. I will zoom in here just to get it right on the road and we'll pop it right there. Accept destination and then we can zoom back out. And what we'll do is the model actually confirming me when the crew in the back are ready to go. So we see that the cabin has been prepared. Dispatch car accident, we know about all this. And we'll keep the response times to medium. So that is all good. Pre-flight operations, we're waiting for the rear crew clearance. Okay, now I'm going to operate the aircraft as realistically as I can. As I mentioned, I am training to be a real helicopter pilot, so I am reasonably familiar with how to do procedures and things in the aircraft. I don't fly this aircraft, sadly, but I do have the real-world um, helicopter checklist in front of me. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll just follow that down, and I'll try and make it as accurate as to you as possible, and also vocalise what I'm doing as well so you guys can keep up. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, we need some battery power, we need some electrical power in the aircraft. So we hit this button twice, and then release it, and it'll go into its test position. And the aircraft will do its bit, which is called the built-in test. It'll run through the built-in test, and uh, just diagnose any problems. It all looks like it's okay. We confirm that we have power-up test okay uh, in our MFD. So we'll go ahead and hit acknowledge, and that'll clear any of the, high, the low priority items so that we don't have the warnings about them. We'll also come up and select this button here, which is numbers, which basically just gives us the um, individual numbers for the parameters that we're going to be looking at as we go through the aircraft start. We also want to make sure that our cyclic and collective are centered and locked. So I can check that the click this um, fully down, check the collective alarm. We've already checked the cyclic with a little wiggle and we'll rotate the pedals as well just to make sure they are free of friction and we can move those. The prime, com prime pumps can now come on with the anti-collision light. And we'll, uh, be, that'll be the cue for John to hop out the aircraft and uh, go out and do his walk around check while we're getting the aircraft ready to start. And it looks like he's feeling a little bit hesitant to do that today. Normally he gets out the aircraft and has a little walk around. I'm not sure if that's been disabled. This is the newer version of the mod that we're using. So it looks like John doesn't want to get out and do his walk around. So we'll go ahead and um, just start off the aircraft with him uh, sitting in the seat. We want to check our DC voltage before... What is that, baby boy? That's, that's, the, that's my buttons. Hold on one second. I've got a cockpit invasion by the young man. Just bear with me one second, guys, because he's trying to press loads of buttons. One sec. In fact, he started an engine. He started an engine, Leonardo. That's uh, not ideal. All right, make sure the anti-collision light's on. Thanks, babe. All right, the, my four-year-old just started the engine for us, guys. So luckily, that was the next step in the checklist there. So we check that the uh, voltage is above 23.5 and we have 24.3, which is all good. Hey, the face is in, John Feza. Good to see you, sir. Okay, engine number one's up. I'm just going to power them down. Unfortunately, guys, my uh, four-year-old pressed the button before the mod was ready to load, so it looks like we're stuck at cabin preparation. So just bear with me one second here while we uh, rejig this. He snuck in. He snuck in. I, I never even heard him. I've got a headset on, guys. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I had a, a four year old stealth ninja sneak in. All I heard was, What does this button do? Or, or What's this? And then he pressed the engine start button, which is a bit unfortunate. But never mind. We'll just go back and uh, fire this back up again. Uh, rescue an injured person from a camping area. We'll try and find the one with the. Um, 
the car rescue again. A car lost control while speeding. This sounds like a good one here. A motorbike accident, even better. Alright, so this one, the, the mod has generated this one on its own, and it looks like it's taking us up towards, um, looks like somewhere near Oban, which is good, because we can use the hospital at Oban, guys, it's going to be fantastic, just a nice short flight from the incident. So I've got some great scenery coming up for you, you're going to be flying over one of the most picturesque parts of the Highlands, so I'll get to showcase not only the aircraft, but the beautiful scenery that we have here in Scotland. Alright, waiting for crew, uh, cabins ready for takeoff, alright, we have the thumbs up. So we can go ahead and continue with this checklist. So we got to check in the DC voltage. We're now ready for engines one and two to come up to um, the flight position. So we'll cycle the prime pumps, check that the anti-collision light is on. And John this time will actually get out. Thank you so much, John. He's not as good looking as John Feza, but he's almost as cool. He'll get in a position for us to start engine number one. So we'll go ahead and select the starter on one. Hey Lars, I'm going to try my best to keep it family friendly sir, don't worry. Thanks for the clip. Okay, engine number one is coming online. We're ready for engine number two now. N1 is rising. Rotor RPM stable at 78%. Hey Andy, welcome. Okay, both engines are idle. T's and P's are all coming out in the green now. We're just waiting on the motor gearbox oil. The, sorry, the main gearbox oil coming up into the green. Alright, while we're waiting on those temperatures building up, we'll go ahead and sort out the overhead panel now. So we'll come up and we'll make sure that the avionics are on, our standby battery is engaged. We also want to come and check that the hydraulic system is uh, on and operating. The emergency floats are armed. Our LAVCAS, which stands for our Light Active Vibration Control System, we'll set that to pilot. That is on. The co-pilot and pilot pressure static heaters are engaged. The prime pumps can come off now. The transfer pumps are on. The strobe and position lights are also engaged and we'll select our HTOS to mute. That is our terrain avoidance warning system. It's still going to be active, it just won't be talking to me, which is the way I want to set up. Alright, HTOS on MFD number 4, which is this one. I like to have it on MFD number 2 instead, so we'll go up and pop it on DMAP. And we'll select HTOS. And this basically lets us know if we are higher or lower than the surrounding terrain. We'll turn on the weather radar and confirm that that is engaged with a good handshake. We have the weather radar feedback coming through there. Briefing and bugs. So there's no ATC at this airfield at the moment at Glasgow, so we won't be contacting tower. We're going to be doing what is called a PC-1, a performance category 1 departure, because there's lots of room around the aircraft. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take off, we're going to do a hover check at around about 5 feet to make sure that the engine's OK and the rotor RPM is stable. We'll then climb up to 15 feet and we'll start transitioning forward towards what is called our VTOS speed, which stands for our Velocity Takeoff Safety Speed. And that's 45 knots, you can see that in this uh, window here. And once we get to 45 knots, we'll start climbing up towards our decision height, which we're going to set at 200 feet today. And check that the decision altitude is also set to 200 feet and that is both confirmed. Make sure that our weight is validated and we'll select previous there. 
Um, if we have an engine failure, we're going to attempt to return back to the airfield um, before decision altitude. If we have an engine failure after decision altitude, there's some golf courses and some fields and things we can land to over on the north side of the airfield. Right. Uh, briefing in box. We've covered the uh, departure briefing. 1010 is set for our Q&H. Instruments are set and checked. Altimeters, we have 1010. We're good for the engines to go to flight now, so we'll go to flight on one and flight on two. We'll see the rotor RPM building up above 100%. And Okay, torque sharing is confirmed. T's and P's are all in the green. Rotor RPM is stable at 103%. We'll go ahead and turn on the backup autopilot as well as AP1 and AP2 so that we have lots of autopilot redundancy during the flight. And that is the aircraft checked up and ready to go, guys. We are clear on the left-hand side. The doors are closed. The rear cabin door is closed. We're clear on the right-hand side and the rear cabin door is closed also. All right, looking straight ahead, the wind is 230 at six knots, so the wind's coming slightly from the right-hand side. Clear on the right, clear on the left. Looking straight ahead as we apply collective power onto the aircraft and apply in power pedal, which in this helicopter is the left pedal. Slowly increasing collective, the aircraft's getting light on the skids, we'll commit to flight now. Nice steady transition into an in-ground effect hover. We're checking our T's and P's, are all looking good. Warnings and master lists are checked. There's no additional warnings came up. The rotor RPM is stable and in the green. And the uh, FLI, our first limit indicator, is below the blue line. That basically means that we're not pulling too much power. So face to the north, we'll bring the aircraft up to 15 feet now. And we'll start our transition forward. Looking left, looking right. No traffic coming, apart from actual traffic. Traffic, traffic. Alright, accelerating towards our VTOS speed, power's coming up towards the blue line, there's 30 knots. Holding that attitude, nothing's coming on the left, nothing's coming on the right. There's our VTOS speed there, we are climbing and departing out towards the northeast. Okay, road RPM stable at 97%, T's and P's are in the green, torque shearing is confirmed and the fuel is checked at 328 kilos. Hey, good evening, Speed Rabbish. Hello, everybody on uh, uh, YouTube. Welcome, guys. Andy says that casually would have died by now. Fortunately for us, Andy, we are not the first responders, my friend. We are responding to an ambulance that is already on scene. So we are not the first responder. They're just calling for our help to get the casualty to hospital. Hey, Matt Smith, thank you so much for the donation to the channel. What's your tipple, Mav? Cider, lager? I think it would have to be a uh, Copperberg cider, my friend. Thank you so much, Matt. That'll go towards making the airliners community bigger and better. Thank you so much. All right, we're coming up for the Erskine Bridge. And you can see on the left-hand side, the magenta line that shows us our flight plan to get to the incident that we're responding to. So we're going to start coming out of the uh, Glasgow helicopter lane which ends at this bridge here. The, this is called the Erskine Bridge VRP. And now we can start routing direct towards the incident which is just to the north of Oban. Hey Simon, yeah, it's fantastic. Flying a mix of flight simulator over Scotland's a real treat. All right, now that we are airborne, I'm going to dial in our upper autopilot modes now. In this helicopter, the autopilot is always on. It's not like fixed wing commercial airliners where they turn the autopilot on and off. In this helicopter, the autopilot is always on, but we have several different modes that we can uh, disable or engage, but in general, the fly-by-wire is very powerful in this aircraft and it's never something that you turn off. So what we're going to do is engage free modes. We're going to engage altitude hold, uh, which I suppose you can think of as VNAV. Uh, we're going to engage our um, heading hold, which is very similar to LNAV, and also our indicated airspeed uh, hold, which is very similar to an auto-throttle in a fixed-wing aircraft. So we'll go ahead and select altitude hold first. 
then heading hold, then indicated airspeed. The aircraft's going to just slow down just a little bit and then accelerate back up towards the uh, cruise speed that I set. One really cool thing that we can do in a helicopter is couple up the autopilot to the flight plan that we have, which is following this magenta line. So if I hit couple here on the MFD, the aircraft will then start lining up just as if you were lining up on a VOR or a navigation beacon. That will start lining up the uh, inbound track with the course that we have set on the flight management computer. I'm not using Sharka, no, I'm using a, um, Constellation Throttle. It is Virpo that I'm using, yeah. Dave Blue says, Mav, read any comments on here with a huge pinch of salt, thank you sir. Mostly innocent humour, leg pulling and doomsday based on due to frequent go-arounds we have. Roger that, thank you very much for the heads up my friend. Alright, so we're just heading up to Loch Lomond. This is the town of Alexandria below us here. This is Loch Lomond that you can see in front of us. Very famous piece of water in Scotland. Very prestigious golf course over here as well. So we have some fantastic scenery coming up. I can just have a look at our flight time. Our ETA is about 19 minutes. We have 40 miles to go. As you can see, there's quite a bit of terrain in front of us and already, you can already tell by looking out the aircraft that we're definitely lower than this terrain. And we can confirm that with our HTOS system. This stands for our Helicopter Terrain Avoidance and Warning System. And essentially, what it'll show is anything that's in red is higher than the altitude that the aircraft's flying at the moment. I can also put on a synthetic display here, which I have to do on this one first. So yes, there we go. Alright, and this will show me the same sort of thing. As we get closer to there, it'll actually build up a synthetic picture of the terrain in front of me. So if we ever found ourselves at IMC and we don't have any visibility, we can use these two systems in conjunction with each other to make sure that we don't hit any terrain or end up getting the aircraft into trouble somewhere. All right, so I'm going to start a, a nice autopilot climb here just to make sure that we clear this terrain on top of us. Sorry, out in front. So we'll go for an altitude of about 2,300 feet initially and see if we get on. Hey Casey, this is a virtual reality game sir, yes it is compatible with VR however, I'm flying in 2D at the moment, I'm not flying in VR. The A380 would be better if there was cider on board, says John Fezza. Johnny Walker is red, Johnny Walker red label whiskey is riding me over, oh dear. Sounds like John's had a good bank holiday weekend. Jim on Twitch says, uh, are you actually a student helicopter pilot? I am indeed, sir. Best of luck for your future. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, you can uh, see me fly helicopters. I have a YouTube channel. Hold on, I'll get you a link for... Uh, so what I'm doing, I'm doing a bit of a, a video blog with the helicopter training where I'm, I'm filming all my lessons and putting them up online. So if you guys want to see me fly a helicopter in real life, Check out my uh, series, which is called Sim Pilot to Real Pilot. I will post a link for you guys now.
Alright, good job we came back to the cockpit just in time. We've got some more terrain coming up, so we're going to bump up from 2300 up to about uh, 3100 should be fine. And again, just cross-checking on the HTOS system to make sure that there's nothing unexpected around. Obviously the visibility is quite nice in Scotland today, so we, uh, we're not too worried about IMC. It's a little bit windy, the wind's going to be gusting over these hills, which will see the aircraft moving around and getting bumped up and down as we transit in towards the west coast. Uh, I do hope to be a flying instructor, G Jim. I'm hoping to go on to be a flying instructor, and, and my, my ultimate dream would be to fly HEMS, flying an air ambulance somewhere in the UK. That would be the ultimate dream. Beautiful scenery, guys. Actually, this is the real world weather, Andy. This is live weather from Scotland, so it does shine. The sun does come out in Scotland every now and then. Summer's nice in Scotland, guys. I love summer in Scotland. It's my favourite Wednesday of the year. Dave Blue asks, Mav, a genuine question. Do emergency services fly specific routes or is it a free-for-all? I wouldn't say... I mean, essentially, yeah, it's a free-for-all. But basically, they're going to fly whichever route gets them to the patient the quickest. So, essentially, it's it's, it's mainly direct flights that they do. Obviously, there, there are air, pieces of airspace that they're not allowed to enter. But essentially, dude, it, 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 most of it is VFR flying where it's... Um, they get the location of where the incident is. They take off and they fly in a straight line towards the um, incident. Obviously time saves lives, so they don't want to be messing around with lower air corridors and things like that, so... Yeah, it's pretty much direct flights, my friend. Simon on YouTube says, Maverick, that would be fantastic flying and being on a crew for Hems. What a fantastic, challenging... But rewarding job, yeah, hundred percent, Simon. That's that's my dream job is to be flying this aircraft. Actually, that would be the ultimate dream. Would be to fly this exact helicopter in Scotland as a an air ambulance pilot. But I'm just taking little steps at a time. At the moment, I'm still working on getting my uh, PPLH, my private pilot's license helicopter. It's going really well so far. I just started my training towards the end of last year and. Um, yeah, I'm at a really exciting stage in my flying training career now because I'm getting to the point where uh, I do all the takeoffs, all the landings, all the air taxiing, all the flying the circuit. So essentially, obviously the instructor's still sitting in the seat, but I, I, I pretty much do 100% of the flying unless he is uh, demonstrating a new, a new manoeuvre or a new technique or a new procedure that I have to learn. Then he um, he does it first, and then yeah, he or she, I should say, they do it first, and then I have a go at doing it after them. Hey, Day Blue, thank you so much again for another donation, guys. Thank you. I know the airliners team will really appreciate it. Such a great community airliners live I've got. I'm so glad you guys could hop on and. I know this isn't what you're used to with the commercial airliners and doing the long haul and short haul stuff. This will be something a little bit different for you helicopter lovers to hopefully enjoy. And you're going to get to see some cool animations as well as we get up towards the uh, instant site and land somewhere close. But yeah guys, keep that support coming. All the donations, all the subscriptions, everything goes towards making the airliners live community a bigger and better place.
Hey, Darren from the base here on Twitch. Good to see you, sir. Not at all, brother. Not at all. I have just, uh, yeah, been very kindly invited to come and host a session on the Airliners Live platform. So, they're good friends of mine. They've been great supporters of my channel. Um, Martin and John even have 104th Maverick uh, jumpers and t-shirts. So, when they approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing a stream on the channel, I, I definitely couldn't say no. Hey, thanks, Steve. Glad you're enjoying. Lars on Twitch says it's definitely more exciting than airline streams. Okay, well, right now is a little bit of an airline stream because we're just on the cruise, guys. But the good news is we only have 10 more minutes to go. 21.2 nautical miles until we get to the incident that we're responding to. So if you're just joining us and you're not sure what's going on, we are in the Scottish Air Ambulance Airbus 145 helicopter. We are responding to a motorcycle accident that has happened on the west coast of Scotland. And we're heading out towards Oban to um, assist in the first responders and emergency crews that are already on scene. Carl Crawford with a great question on YouTube. How many years training is it to become a full helicopter pilot? It's really a bit of a convoluted answer, if I'm honest, Carl. Um, I, I mean, unfortunately, it, it really comes down to money, uh, but skill and ability come into it as well. <coughs> the um, To get a private pilot's license for helicopters, the minimum requirement legally is 45 hours of training. But the national average in the United Kingdom is actually around about 75 hours of training before someone's ready to sit their skills test to become a, a licensed helicopter pilot. So depending on how, how how quickly you take to the aircraft and how much money you have, you could potentially do it inside six months, um, but you would have to be throwing an awful lot of money at it. Learning to fly helicopters is, a, is disgustingly expensive. You're looking at around about 550 pounds an hour so if you take 550 and times that by 75, that gives you an idea of just how expensive it is to get up and running with the PPL. On top of that, you have your commercial pilot license, your CPLH, and uh, yeah, that is eye-wateringly expensive. That is, yeah, you're looking at the, the better part of a hundred thousand pounds to, to, uh, to get that far. A lot of people manage to get scholarships and sponsorships but um, yeah, depending on how far you want to go, you could you could be qual you could get your PPLH with inside a year, as long as you had the money to do so. Simon on YouTube says, "I'm really liking this helicopter. Absolutely amazing. Great commentary and chat from Maverick. Awesome stuff. I'm glad you're enjoying it, sir. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate." There is a lot going on on YouTube, guys, so I will try and keep up as best I can while we're in the cruise. What's the minimum distance you can land to in the instant accident scene, asks uh, Day Blue. Um, well, really, just as close as you can get. Obviously, you want to try and be as safe as possible. The aircraft has a main rotor, which extends out below the width of the fuselage, obviously, so you have to take that into account. Um, but essentially, you can get right up to within about 50 feet and before you're going to start upsetting people on the ground, obviously the, the main rotor wash is very powerful on an aircraft this size, so you, you wouldn't want to get much closer than that. We're actually going to try and land on the road right next to the, where the accident has taken place, guys. We believe that the, uh, the police are on scene at the moment and they have closed the road to traffic, so quite a bit of turbulence coming over these mountains now. Yeah, Matthew, it's very, very expensive, unfortunately, dude. Speed radish, it's about 500 to 550 pounds, yeah, per hour. So much cheaper to learn how to fly fixed wing, guys. Way, way cheaper. As part of your training, have you flown into bad weather and worked out plans of how to avoid it, Maverick? Asked Simon. 
Um, yes and no, dude. If you look at the, I, I posted a link to me, my YouTube channel where I show you videos of me flying. The second video that I posted up, um, although the weather's not bad from a visibility standpoint, uh, the weather was right on the limit for what the aircraft can legally fly in with regards to the wind. I'm just going to take a little cut to the left here, guys, to avoid crashing into the terrain. So the aircraft that I fly, the limit for the wind is 30 knots. And the second flying video that I've put up, the second video in the series, Sim Pilot to Real Pilot, the wind, we're actually flying in 26 knots. Um, so that's the worst weather that I'd flown in for a little while, but just a couple of weeks ago, I actually flew in 29 knot winds, and I uh, put, up, put up a little video on my channel, guys, if you want to check this out, bear with me one second, I'll send a link, so this is me, um, this is me landing in a crosswind, a 29 knot crosswind, just bear with me one second, I'll get you the link here. So there's the link, hopefully that went through. So a lot of people ask, a lot of people have asked me, why why wouldn't you just land into the wind? Well it's important as a helicopter pilot that you can land in a crosswind. Obviously we always want to approach to land the landing area into wind. That is very important. But because we, we can't always land as in arrive in a landing area and then touch down with the nose facing into the wind. It's very important for helicopter pilots to be able to land in a tailwind, in a crosswind from the right, a crosswind from the left, as well as a headwind. So that video clip is um, me landing in a, a 29 knot crosswind, a 90 degree crosswind from the right hand side. And that's the worst that I'll ever fly in guys. The legal limit is 30 knots and that wind was 29 knots. So I won't ever fly in anything worse than that. The guy sat next to me was my flight instructor, Jonathan. Or I mean this guy. This guy's called John. All right, we're getting very close. We are seven miles out. We'll be there in three minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to vocalize as we um, arrive on scene. I'll talk you through the procedure of how um, a real air ambulance pilot would go about uh, coming into this uh, incident and landing and, and the checks that we would go through to make this happen. Hey Scushy, they absolutely do. To be honest, the majority of um, helicopter pilots that are air ambulance, coast guard or police helicopter pilots are all ex-military. Oban is on our left hand side, for those of you that are familiar with this part of the country. That is Oban over there. Hey Alex, I do do flights with Concorde sir, but not. I haven't done them for a very long time. I'm waiting for the FS Labs Concorde to come out on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and disengage the upper modes on the autopilot now because we are three and a half miles out. So I'll disengage altitude and indicated airspeed. And we can see that the incident is coming up straight ahead so we want to turn just slightly to the left hand side so that we put the instant on the right hand side of the aircraft to make it easier for us to do our safety checks as we're coming into land. Hey Harry, yeah, well spotted dude, the Isle of Lismore off there on the left hand side. Harry knows his Scottish geography. We are indeed Matthew, yeah, not too far at all. Well 
Okay, folks, we need to start looking out for blue flashing lights now. I'm going to start slowing down and going down. Now, unfortunately for me, it looks like the road might be running through this forest here, which is going to make my job a lot more difficult trying to land. But we'll find the safest place possible and uh, touch her down. somewhere down on the right hand side yeah it looks like it's right in a forest so unfortunately for me the mod picked the worst place possible to spawn it in so this is definitely going to be earning my money today unless it's a little bit further up on the road and it looks like yeah we got lucky guys look we can see it just there on that roundabout all right so we have arrived on scene we can see the ambulance the first responders are there the fire brigade is there as well Right, so what we're going to do now is what is called a high altitude reconnaissance. So essentially what we're doing here is we're quickly surveying the landing area. We never ever want to just hashtag full send and YOLO it in there. Because there could be a lot of stuff that can cause damage to the aircraft, the crew, and ultimately the people on the ground that we crash. So we're going to take a look around us, make sure that we're not going to fly in any terrain. And then we're going to have a good look at the landing site. And where we're going to land is right in here on this little field next to the road. So we're having a look at the what we call the five S's guys, okay? And that stands for the size, shape, slope, and surrounding and surface of the landing area. So all of those check out, the size is big enough, the shape is a, a decent enough size for us to get in. There's not too much of a slope down there that we need to worry about. The surroundings, we can see the trees and the obstacles surrounding the landing area. The main thing that we're looking out for is the high tension power cables. Now we're not looking for the power cables themselves initially, what we're looking for is the pylons that they are suspended from. We don't see any pylons coming up from there. And I don't see any cables coming away from any pylons anywhere near the landing area, which is good. Now, we always want to do a minimum of two orbits in the high reconnaissance. Yes, it is important to get to the casualty quickly, but it is even more important to make sure that we don't crash the aircraft and potentially cause more casualties on the ground. So we're going to come in for another pass and then we'll set up our approach. Now next on our checklist we're thinking about the wind direction and velocity. Now the wind is quite pedestrian at the moment, it is from the south at four knots, so we're not too worried about landing with a, a crosswind or a tailwind, that's going to be well within the limits for the aircraft. The, the approach and overshoot path. We're going to approach from out here over the water. If we need to overshoot or go around or have an emergency, we're going to go left. We don't want to have an emergency out over the water. We want to have one over those nice fields here that we can make an approach into and touch down. The terrain, turbulence and touchdown point is our final checklist item. We've talked about the terrain, we know that there's a lot of mountains around here so we are expecting a little bit of turbulence on the way in and we've already briefed our touchdown point. So let's have a look at the engines, T's and P's are looking good, torque sharing is confirmed, the rotor RPM is stable at 97%. Fuel is checked at 254 kilos. I've got a good visual reference forward in the landing area. It looks clear, there's no obstacles. I'm now monitoring my rotor RPM as I watch it build up through 101%. We're committing forward into the landing area with a good forward trend. The engines are stable, rotor RPM is uh, holding at 102% now. We have a good forward trend, we're not too fast, we're not too slow. We are going to start slowing down here as we come in a little bit closer to the ground. We're applying collective and left pedal, which is power pedal in this aircraft as we get lower and slower. And we're just going to thread the needle in between these trees. Which on the trees on the right hand side, I am aware there's a tree on the left hand side. A little bit more pedal, a little bit more collective. Cyclic's coming forward just to maintain that forward momentum. A little bit of a funky accident seen with the way that the terrain's set up, but uh, you can't win them all guys. Alright, power's coming up, we're going to settle into ground effect. There's 10 feet. We're on a little bit of a slope here. So we're going to land with the nose into the slope, we'll make contact on the left skid first. Left skid's down, the right skid is still in the air. And we'll just gently fly the rest of the aircraft onto the ground here, gently lowering the collective. And we'll do what's called a seating check, which is where we wiggle the pedals, wiggle the side click, just to make sure the aircraft's not going to roll over as we dump out the collective and centre the side click and the uh, collective there. And we can go ahead and select idle on our engines. And that'll be the cue for the medical team to get out and hop out to the casualty. All right, John, John and John, we are on the ground, guys. You can hop out when you're ready.
Hey, speedbird. Okay, so both medical uh, personnel are heading to the casual. They're not going for the stretcher, which normally means that the patient is not ready to get in the helicopter just yet. So we're going to go ahead and counterintuitively, guys, we're going to go ahead and shut down the engines. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, why we do that in a little second. All right, both engines spooling down. Rotor RPM is spooling down as well. We'll go ahead. Uh, we're okay for the uh, rotor brake. That's fine. All right, we'll go ahead and shut down our consumables now that we're on the ground and we have the engine off. So we'll turn off the avionics. We'll leave the standby battery on for now. We'll turn off the transfer pumps. Our lavcast system can come off as well. The battery switch stays where it is. The uh, pilot and co-pilot static heaters are off. Prime pumps and transfer pumps are off. Um, we'll turn off the position light and the anti-collision light. And now we'll go ahead and grab the master battery and finally the standby battery as well. Now a lot of people, uh, and, and quite correctly, assume that, hey, why wouldn't you leave the engines running, Maverick? Why, why why, would you shut down the engines? Why do they shut down the engines in real life as well? Well, one of the main reasons is is, is noise. Um, we don't want to, we, we want these guys to be able to do their job properly without causing too much noise and disturbance. Um, a lot of people also don't really appreciate that what we're doing here, guys, we are not just a taxi, okay? Um, um, Hems helicopters, they bring the hospital to the patient. Yes, they up, they then pick the patient up and bring the patient to the hospital, but the primary role is to bring the hospital to the patient. Essentially, what we have in the back here, ladies and gentlemen, is a fly-in intensive care unit. So all the equipment on board is all um, suited for providing like trauma therapy on scene. Uh, these are very, very, in real life certainly anyway, these um, medical personnel really are the guys at the top of their game. So it's not just about getting to the casualty quickly, getting them in the aircraft as quick as possible and getting them to hospital as quick as possible. It's about getting these, get these men and women to the casualty as quick as possible with all the equipment that they need to save lives. So that's why most times literally eight eight times out of ten when you see an air ambulance land somewhere they will shut down the engines let the ground crew let the medical team do their work if the patient is stable enough to fly then they'll load them into the aircraft and fly them in but it's not just about kind of chucking them in the back and getting them to a hospital as fast as possible now obviously there, there are some occasions where like time is of the essence there's the patient has been already stabilized by the first responders on the ground and we just need to get them to the hospital as a highest priority but in these kind of situations where the medical team are actually going to the patient without going for the stretcher first we shut the engines down and wait for them to come back and get the stretcher and that's what you're about to see now hey you're welcome day Hey, chippers. Yeah, they are a little bit, dude. Just bear with me while I tan a disgusting protein shake. Ugh. All right, so he is coming for the stretcher. And off he goes. All right, while he is going to load the patient, we'll get the aircraft pre-flighted and so we can uh, get going in an expeditious fashion. The patient is in a critical condition. Code two is the priority assigned by the doctor. Code one is an immediate risk of death. Code two is immediate risk of serious injury. Code three and above is no risk to life. Right, so the first thing we want to do is get the electrical power back on the aircraft. So we'll hit that button twice. It'll go into its bit test. We'll see test in progress. And we're up and running and our alignment has started. You can see how much of a slope we're on here left to right. All right, cyclic and collective are both centered and locked. Prime pumps can come back on now. We'll ask John to hop out. And the collision Can you hop out please, John, and do the walk around while we get her started? Thank you, sir. All right, DC voltage, want to check that we have greater than 
excuse me, 23 and a half volts. We have 24.3. We'll go ahead for start on number one. Hey, what's up, Yamakaze? I use a full Verpal uh, control setup to fly the aircraft. Hey, Samantha. Thank you so much for your kind words. I hope you're enjoying. All right, engine number one is coming up. Idle is in the cave. We can go for number two now. Number two, please, John. John, number two, sir. Thank you. All right, here comes John and John with the patient. Yeah, Matthew, it's so cool, isn't it? All right, patient is in, guys. Okay, overhead panel, we'll go ahead and get the avionics back on, standby battery, uh, hydraulics are checked, the light active vibration control system will set the passenger to make it as comfortable for the patient as possible, co-pilot and pilot static heaters are on, prime pumps are off, transfer pumps are engaged, strobe position and anti collision lights are all on, HTAWs are selected to mute, the emergency floats are armed. We'll come down, make sure the backup autopilot's on, AP1, AP2 is selected, HTOS good handshake on 4, weather radar is up and running and confirmed as engaged. Startup test OK, dispatch message, we'll have to select the hospital that we're flying to now, manually select destination, and we're going to take this patient to the hospital at Oban, Lorne and Islands Hospital, accept destination, accept selection, and we've got to fly to the hospital now. All right, pre-flight test, okay, avionics are set, HTOS we talked about, briefing and bugs, all right, different, different from the airfield departure, guys, this is going to be what we call a PC2, a performance category 2 departure, some of you guys may have heard of this before, it's called a Cat A departure, uh, previous, so you see here, Cat A VTOL, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring the aircraft up, we're going to do a quick power check, and then we're going to come out backwards, the reason why we do that is in case we have an engine failure during takeoff, we can attempt to auto rotate back onto where we are at the moment. So we'll go for a PC2 Cat A departure. Altimeter is set 1010. The briefing is complete. QNH is set. The autopilots are on. We can go for flight on one. And guarded. Flight on two. Guarded. Torque sharing is confirmed. T's and P's are all in the green. Rotor RPM is building up through 100%. We're looking for that to stabilise around about 102. There is 102 coming now. Everything's in the green. Fuel's checked at 222 kilos. We're clear on the right-hand side. The doors are closed. We're clear on the left-hand side. The doors are closed. The rear cabin is closed. Right, so we're on an angle, so we have to get the aircraft up off the ground on one side of the aircraft first before we go anywhere. So I'm going to apply power. And I'm going to fly the right side of the aircraft only. So now the left skid is touching the ground, but the right skid is in the air. And we're going to commit to our departure manoeuvre now. Power. Looking straight ahead. Good references. 3, 2, 1. Alright. Rotor RPM is stable. Torque sharing is confirmed. No warning for the master list. We're holding below the blue line. Clear on the right, clear on the left. Let's come back and out. Power's above the blue line now. Our decision height is 200 feet, there's 70 feet. We're trying to keep the landing area in the chin window, which is this bubble window where you can see my feet. There's 150, rotor RPM still holding, 180, 190, 200 feet to side, clear on the right, clear on the left, fly away. Cyclic forward, let the aircraft catch up, power pedal to the right. Bring the power back to the blue line. We're through our velocity takeoff safety speed. And now we're departing southbound towards Oban.
because we're going to be landing at Oban, it is a prepared um, helipad. So we had to do our checks to land there because that is what's called an unprepared surface or an off-site landing. Where we're going in to land at the hospital and that is a prepared site so we won't need to circle for our reconnaissance. We'll be able to just come straight in and land. Surely Dev, with a great question on Twitch, says, what does the pack settings on LavCast do? So we have two settings on LavCast, which is our light active vibration control system. And the two settings are pilot or passenger. And essentially it just changes where the system is focusing all its efforts from. So when we have someone in the back, we have it on passenger to make the vibration in the back of the cabin as light as possible. When there's no one in the back, we have it set on pilot to make the vibrations as minimal as possible up at the front of the aircraft. Practically Geek on YouTube says, Do I, it is freeware, but I have, I have freeware add-on scenery for the hospital. UFOL asks, what rescue mod am I using on YouTube? It's called the Random and Anywhere Rescue Mod. Random and Anywhere. If you Google it, you'll be able to find it. Right, we'll dial in the upper modes now. It's not a long flight at all. In fact, we're seven miles. I'll just hand fly this back in. The hospital is just down here. There's Oban there in front of us. Hey, Darren, it is indeed. Good to see you, John Russell. Hey, Gillian, welcome. The patient is okay, Andrew, thank you. Yeah, as far as I'm aware. Thanks for the links, John. I'm not sure if it will come to Xbox Aviation Boy. I am not sure. Uh oh, can we get back in the cockpit? There we go. Alright, the patient is still alive, guys. Okay, so here's Oban Airfield below us down on the left hand side. How would you guys like to see a mountain rescue next? Will we go for that? We'll do a we'll do a mountain rescue off from uh, one of the mountains in Glencoe using the winch. Okay, four and a half miles out from the hospital. I can see where it's located if I can reach the mouse. The hospital is just about here. start our descent into open. We can see it up on the uh, D map here. start lowering collective so that we start slowing down as well as going down. Alright, good visual on the hospital, I can see it. Now we're going to try and minimise our time flying over residential areas. We do have to fly over some houses on the way in, that can't be helped, but we'll try and minimise the impact. So we'll decelerate um, out towards this hill and then we'll coming in a left hand turn and uh, land. The wind is coming from, basically we're nose into wind at the moment, so we are going to be landing with a little bit of a tailwind. It's only five knots, so it's not too bad at all. 
There's the helipad there. Alright, starting our approach now. We are very fast at the moment, which is good for the patient. Not so good for the pilot. So I'm going to just start gently slowing down. We're coming through 100 knots. I'm watching the rotor RPM, which is this gauge here, but it says 97. I'm monitoring that and making sure it stabilizes around about 102% as we get a little bit slower. T's and P's are checked, everything's in the green torch here and is confirmed. Fuel is checked at 196 kilos. We have good visual references in front. Alright, we're just imagining coming down like a glide slope for all you airliners. We're imagining someone standing on the helipad with a laser pen shining it at the aircraft and we're just flying down that laser. Just avoiding that tree on the left hand side. T's and P's are looking good. Roar RPM stable at 101%, committing into the landing area. Bringing in the power with the left pedal, stabilizing the ground effect. Center it up on the pad. Hold position. Five, four, three, two, one. Contact. We are on the ground. Lower the collective. Select the engines to idle. Welcome. T's and P stands for temperatures and pressures, Terry. Simon says, do you have to operate outside the commercial flight paths or are you in constant communication with ATC and instrument panels can detect other aviation in the area? Um, a little bit of both, Simon. It depends on what the weather's doing. If the weather's really bad and we have to fly IMC, then we would fly along the lower air corridors or we would go from nav navigational aid to navigational aid, different nav beacons. If the weather's okay, though, we just fly VFR. So we, we are bound by the, the same rules as everybody else that flies VFR. Hey, thanks, Simon. Hey, Oscars. This is the action pack, but it's, I'm using it with a, a mod called the Random and Everywhere. I don't, can we maybe get that link, John, on Twitch? Some of the guys are asking on Twitch where they can um, get the mod from. Alright, patient has been handed over to the emergency services here at Oban, guys. So hopefully they will take um, good care of him and get him back on his feet. But wait a minute. They're taking him into the forest. Oh no! He's not that sick, guys. Bring him back. Come on. Oh, he's okay. They're just going along with it. No, they're going back into the forest. Right. I don't want to be a witness to that, guys. I do not want to witness that. Day Blue, thanks for another donation, dude. You're very welcome. You are very welcome. My absolute pleasure to be the guest uh, host today on Airliners, guys. I'm really enjoying it. I've been a big fan of the community for a long time. I'm uh, lurking pretty much every other day when they're online. Right, let's see if we can get a mountain rescue mission now, guys. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just put a little bit more fuel in the aircraft. So I don't have to waste time with uh, going to refuel. Uh, Yamakazi asks, how is the realism for the helicopter? I don't fly this helicopter in real life, dude. I fly a different one, but... Um, I have heard from uh, helicopter pilots that fly this in real life and they, they say that the helicopter flight model is, is, is pretty close to what it's like in real life. It's never ever going to be the same, guys. Flying helicopters in a sim is way, way easier than flying helicopters in real life, but um, it's a good approximation. We're trying to find an injured climber here.
A climber is trapped on a mountainside. We got it, guys. Alright, accept dispatch. Hey, Capona. Alright, the casualty is 41 miles away. Let's see where this is. Uh, close this. Oh dear. They've put the mountain casually in the middle of Glasgow. Oh, it's actually put it on Dunbarton Rock. That's hilarious. Alright, we'll go for another one. Appreciate your patience here, folks. I am just um, regenerating the mission so that we can get one. It's a little bit closer. You're welcome, Andy. I'm glad it helps. I'm glad it helps. If you have any questions, guys, please don't hesitate um, to ask. Uh, this man from the chairlift again. We might just have to take this one when we get a second. If I can't find this. Uh... So basically, we're getting missions here, and I'm just clicking through them to try and get the one where it's a guy trapped on a mountain top and. What we could do is actually put them on Ben Nevis, guys, the, the highest mountain in the UK. An Airbus passenger plane has performed an emergency landing. Lots of car crashes. Alright, we'll take the next chairlift or the next um, camper one that we can and I'll just... We'll just have to rest. We'll just have to hover over a tent. Come on. Oh, we had to. Oh, we had it, guys. Yes! Rescue an injured person camping on a peak. Alright, we'll go for this. Accept dispatch. this. Oh, it's out on, um, it's actually out on Collinsey. Right, we'll go for this one, guys, because this will be kind of cool to fly out towards Collinsey. Um, so just a quick, because someone's going to say, why don't you just land next to the um, patient? I could land next to the patient on this one, guys, but I'm going to demonstrate a winch rescue instead, okay? So We'll actually winch the rescue team down, and then we'll winch the patient back up. Right, let's get the engines back up to flight. So guarded on one, guarded on two. Torque is building, rotor RPM is increasing through 100%. Torque sharing confirmed. Temperatures and pressures, T's and P's. T's and P's are all in the green. There is no warnings or captions. Master list is checked. Rotor RPM is stable at 102%. So we're going to go and do our Cat A departure again, guys, that we did from the when we took off from the incident. I can't go backwards straight away because there is a risk I would hit one of these trees. So what we'll do is we'll do a towering takeoff to 50 feet and then we'll come back. And the whole time while we're reversing, we're going to try and keep the landing helicopter pad inside this chin window. So if we have an engine failure, we can attempt to land back on the helipad. We're clear on both sides, looking straight ahead. Power's coming back up now. We are putting in power pedal, which in this aircraft is a left pedal. The aircraft is now light on the skids, looking straight ahead. Good visual references, committing to power. The aircraft is up, good stable transition into an in-ground effect hover. Rotor RPM is stable at 101%. The warnings and master lists are checked. And we are coming up above the blue line now for 50 feet. 
there's 50 feet, we'll start moving aft now. And we're looking to try and work that helipad into the chin window and there we see it there. So now I want to try and keep it there. There's 120 feet, 130, good rate of climb, engines are stable, rotor RPM is stable, torque tuning is confirmed. There is 190, 200. Clear on the right, clear on the left, we're going to fly away. Power's coming back down towards the blue line. A bit more power pedal just to get the tail moving. Cyclic forward. We are now through effective translational lift and flying away. We're looking for the rotor RPM to come back down to about 97%. There's 98 and stable at 97%. Engines are looking good, torque sharing is confirmed. There's no warnings. Our instruments are checked, the external lights are set, the outside air temperature is plus 12. No icing conditions to worry about. Alright, away we go. Okay, I'm going to dial in our autopilot upper modes here to start us climbing out. So we have a vertical speed hold, which is very similar to VNAV for you fixed wing guys. So we'll go ahead and essentially engage VNAV. We'll pop in heading hold as well. Hey, Matthew, thank you so much for... Get yourself a drink, Maverick. Thank you so much, brother. That's very kind of you, Matthew. Thank you. Dude, it's not me that deserves a drink. It's those hard-working guys at Airliner's Life. The amount of work that goes into that production is just incredible. So many great people involved in it as well. I'd love to actually drive up to Manchester one time and, um, and meet the guys in real life. That'd be super cool. I'm going to go ahead and gauge indicated airspeed hold now. It's going to pre-select about 120 knots, I think, so we should see the aircraft take a little bit of a nose forward, but that's fine, we're still climbing. I'm happy with the altitude about now. We'll, we'll get to about 16, 1700. We can see that we are on a good course to intercept our Magenta Line, which is our flight plan from our flight management computer. And we can see that the uh, the course track is just coming on now. I don't use Volanta, Aiden, no. I know a lot of people do, my friend, but I don't. Not for flying helicopters, anyway. I'm actually really thinking about the idea of getting more into flight sim from a, an airliner point of view. One of my favourite aircraft in real life is the 757. And I believe that that's coming out later on this year, so that might be enough to drag me in. I'm not much of an Airbus fan. I'm more of a Boeing type of guy when it comes to airliners. So, my best friend in real life is actually a 737 captain for uh, Thompson. But I'm not a massive fan of the 737, unfortunately. So I, I really want to fly like the the 757 or the treble seven, or the, um, the seven eight seven. A PMDG seven five would be great, yeah. Oh, I'd love that, Paul. I'd love that. Right, where are we? We're 24 miles away. It's only going to take us 12 minutes to get there, guys. We have a little bit of weather up ahead. We'll check the outside air temperature. It is plus 9, plus 10 at this altitude, so we're not worried about icing. Icing's not going to be something that we have to worry about at this sort of temperature. I'm going to pop a cool external view on. I just need to go AFK for it. Dave Blue says, you're welcome to stay in our spare room if you come to Manchester, but be warned, plenty of red wine and you will not get to sleep before 5am. <laughs> 
Oh, I might have to think twice about that, my friend. I don't really drink. Even when I do, it's just a cheeky cider every now and then. Right, guys, I need to go AFK for just two or three minutes. I'll be back with you as quick as I can. If it looks like we're going to crash, wave your hands in front of the monitor as fast as you can. I'll be right back. Guys, I am back. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, there's Colin say off the 12 o'clock. Beautiful reflections off the water. Look at that, guys. A little bit of wind bumping us around. So I was hoping to do a mountain rescue on this mission, folks, but um, we were, we were, I was just really conscious that there's a lot of you guys watching and me just kind of sieving through the missions trying to get the right one isn't exactly entertaining, so we just went for this one. Now, this is going to be we're rescuing someone from a campsite, so technically speaking, we definitely could just land next to the campsite. But I'm going to demonstrate using the winch on this aircraft and we'll, we'll winch the crew down and winch the casualty back up. Sorry Kevin, I have no idea what that is my friend, sorry. I know it's one of the options, but I don't know what it does. Superboy on Twitch says, Mav, what base do you use? I use the Verpal Warbird base. Yeah, the tent might get blown away. Yeah, you're right Lars. Quite bumpy out here. Oh, I'll get me back in the cockpit. I always press the wrong button, guys. Sorry. 
Right, we are uh, 13 miles away. It'll take us just under 7 minutes. You guys all right in the back? Roger. Yeah, everybody looks good. Copy that. Thanks, John. Hey, what's up, Shaquille O'Meal? It's been a long time. Good to see you, sir. It's going really well, dude. It's going really well. Thank you. My pilot training's coming on brilliantly. I was actually supposed to be flying today in real life, guys, but unfortunately the weather in the Midlands is not great, so I'm afraid my uh, flying lesson got cancelled for today. Uh, Andrew asks, can you fly the Coast Guard rescue helicopter on the sim? You definitely can, my friend, yeah. You can actually fly this aircraft, but with a Coast Guard skin on it. Okay, here's Colin C up ahead. Yes, Samantha, I live in... <coughs> let me get this right. I live in... <coughs> Royal Leamington Spa! So obviously I'm Scottish as you can hear, but... I live down here in England with my beautiful girlfriend and her four-year-old son. And we live in... Royal Leamington Spa! Ah, oh, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the support, guys. There is me landing a helicopter in real life. If you uh, are not uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel, if you click on that little short there, you can maybe maybe throw me a like and a subscribe, or just a like if you don't feel like subscribing. Just liking the video will really help me out, and I, I really appreciate the support. Hello Midlands mate, hi Sam. <laughs> yeah, I fly out of um, Leicester, Samantha. I am a proud student of the Heli Center Aviation Academy. Supra says, Jesus, how can you drink the tap water down there? And Raka, credit to Raka, says, Jesus doesn't drink water. <laughs> oh, Raka, that's genius. I see what you've done there, sir. You're in the wrong job. Kevin used to live in Leamington, used to live on Mighton Park Road. Oh yeah, I know where that is, yeah. I'm actually moving to Warwick very soon. So we're moving from uh, Leamington Spa to Warwick. Right, we are four miles out, less than two minutes. I'm going to decouple from the uh, FMC. I'll disengage altitude hold and indicate the airspeed and now I have control. Sorry guys, I was flying with my left hand there. Hey baby. It's 
Sorry, speaking of my beautiful girlfriend, I've just been faded in the cockpit. It's really windy here, sweetheart. I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, uh, just some water, please, babe. Hey, Adam. Right, let's get. As you can see, guys, it's pretty windy over here. The wind isn't too strong, but it just seems to be changing direction an awful lot. Go ahead and see if we can wrestle control back. All right, we're getting very close, so I'm going to come left just a little bit so that we put the um, instant on our right hand side for best visibility. Yeah, Terry, looks a little interesting up ahead. Thank you, sweetie. Alright, we are descending. We start slowing down now. I know that, really. I'm not going to tell the world that, though, am I? Right. Half a mile. Should be somewhere on our right hand side, guys. We're looking for tents. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh! Tent spotted, Captain. Off the starboard bow. Right, guys. We, um, obviously, we would normally land at this, okay? But if you're just joining us, I did. Uh oh. Oh, we're okay. I did promise everybody that I would demonstrate a winch rescue this time, so we're going to go ahead and winch this casually in. Now, we still want to do our safety checks, guys, because we might have an emergency. There might be a failure on the aircraft and we have to land. So we are looking at the um, size, shape, slope surrounding and surface of the landing area. It's called our 5S check. Now, there's a lot of trees around about here. I don't see any high tension power lines or anything, which is good. But there is an awful lot of trees that we could hit if we have to make an emergency landing. The slope looks pretty reasonable down on the south side, but certainly up towards the top of the hill, it looks a little bit more pedestrian. It looks like we would be able to land right on the uh, crown of the hill there. The size is big enough to squeeze an aircraft in on the top. I wouldn't like to land close to the tents. The slope's a little bit too outrageous for that. Um, but everything else checks out. The wind direction and velocity, the wind is 208 at 6 knots down here, so that's not too bad. The approach and overshoot path will approach from the north, we'll keep the nose into wind as much as possible while we're winching. If we need to abort, we're going to abort to the right hand side, the side that we're on at the moment, to try and clear all the trees that are over there on the left hand side. Terrain touchdown and turbulence point, we've already talked about the terrain. Um, we are expecting a little bit of turbulence, but not too much, and we're not anticipating to land. However, if we have a failure and we have to do so, we're going to attempt to go to the right-hand side and land down there. All right, getting set up to winch, guys. All right, we are absolutely hawking our engine instruments at this point. We want to check the rotor RPM is stable at 102%. We can see that it is. Torque sharing is confirmed by the engines, and they're looking good. Quick fuel check, fuel is 642 kilos. I am going to quickly just grab my hand off the cyclic here to reach the switch for the hoist, if I can negotiate that. The aircraft's going to turn. This hoist is armed. All right, the hoist is armed. All right, good visual references down and forward. There's trees all around us. I need to be very careful here. We're at 155 feet. We need to be lower than 140 for the winch to work. There's 140. I'm going to stabilise right here. All right, stable. Go ahead and engage auto hover for now. With the um, altitude hold, I need to switch to hoisting. Begin hoisting. All right, now I'm listening to the instructions from our guy. All right, 
my one guy going down. I'll keep him coming forward and right so that I don't fly him into a tree. Alright guys, can't do much better than that. One guy down. I'll show you what it looks like from the winch operator's point of view. Here comes the cable coming back up. There we go. Good luck, sir. On Monday night, we see trees as targets. <laughs> right, it looks like he's down. Alright, disengage, hold, and hover. Alright, we can now clear, clear the area. Power's up above the blue line, we're coming aft and left. Now we do this so that we're giving the medical crew just peace and quiet while they do their job. Their job's hard enough to do without a helicopter just hovering right over them while they're trying to stabilise the patient. And we'll start a nice gentle right hand orbit until they give us a call that we can come back. Let's see if I can get a better view for you guys, hold on. I want to keep the airspeed down below 100 knots while we have the door open. Hey Simon, they can, yeah, the aircraft does have an auto hover mode. So what you see me there doing is that I manually flew in and uh, manually came into a hover. And then once the aircraft was nice and stable and holding position, that's when I engaged the auto hover mode. Alright, just keeping an eye on our vertical speed, we don't want to get too low while we're manoeuvring around here. It is good painful, isn't it? Depending on what's wrong with the casualty, it can take a little while for the medics to get unstable. I don't know is the honest answer, Blitz. I've never tried. I don't really want to try now either, just in case we crash. Alright, the patient is in a critical condition and code 2 is the code assigned by the doctor. So that means there is a serious risk of injury. So we're going to just hold a little bit over here. 
we'll slowly just uh, approach. We're waiting for the call from the doctor. You'll see that he's ready for us to approach and begin hoisting. I've just heard him say that. You guys might not have caught that, but I just heard him say it in my ear. So we can come forward. You see this crosshair here? This is like a target for me to follow. So I'm completely manually flying the aircraft at the moment. All right, good visual references. Torque sharing is confirmed. T's and P's are looking good. Rotor RPM stable, 102%. Uh, I see the medical crew down there. I'll start coming right. Coming forward. All right, holding position. Still manually flying the aircraft. All right, I'm still manually flying, but I'm going to engage the autopilot just so I can show you guys the outside view. Right, we're winching down. First guy's coming up. You can see the doctor still with the patient down there. Now he's bringing the uh, patient stretcher over to where the hook is going to get him. See the helicopter just dipping down under the weight there and then we'll recover our altitude. Simon, thank you so much for the donation. The door is closed, guys, so we need to select. Um, so we'll go back to the hospital. Let me turn track IR off while I do this because it is a nightmare. There we go. Set. Set. Right, okay, so we can leave the hover now. So disengage um, CRHT, which is essentially what holds our altitude in the hover. Disengage the auto hover, clear on the left, clear on the right. Power's coming up above the blue line. Torque sharing confirmed. T's and P's are good. Rotor RPM stable at 101% as we transit out. Power's coming back down below the blue line. We have what's called an FLI, Foxtrot Lima India, which stands for a first limit indicator. And basically, it's like a power limit on the engine. You hear me talk about the blue line. Um, once we are below a certain airspeed, we can pull above the blue line. Once our airspeed gets below us, uh, uh, sorry, above a certain point, uh, we have to Christ, we have to um, make sure that we keep the power below the blue line. So, under thirty knots, we can go above the FLI, the first limit indicator. Uh, but once our speed gets up above about 30, 30 knots, we have to try and uh, get that back down there. Thank you so much, Simon. I'm really impressed with the detail you're going into. Very informative. Thanks so much, dude. Thank you so much for your kind words, your uh, time tonight, and the donation towards the Airliners channel, dude. It's my absolute pleasure to be here with you guys. All the donations are going towards making Airliners Live a bigger and better place, ladies and gentlemen. So your money will be well spent. It's been a pleasure having you guys on board. I've really enjoyed this today. All right, we'll go for 1,300. Selected. A little wobbly. All right, altitude hold. 
heading hold, indicated airspeed, couple up the autopilot. Right, is the patient okay? Patient's looking good in the back, you're okay, you're okay guys, yeah, everybody's okay. John, are you okay? You're okay, yeah? Alright John, thanks. Right, we'll go ahead and set lav cast to passenger. I think it's already on passenger, yeah it is, so. So this system here, you, you hear me talk about this a few times, our lav cast system. It stands for our Light Active Vibration Control System. And what it is, is essentially it's like a dampener underneath the main rotor that um, like counteracts the vibrations coming in from the main rotor. So obviously the aircraft, you, you will feel vibrations in the aircraft, but with the, the lav cast enabled, it dampens out the majority of those vibrations. So it's a lot smoother ride than some other helicopters. Yeah, it's cool, Terry, isn't it? Hey, Puppington's on the chat. My beautiful baby girl's on the chat, guys, on uh, Twitch. Good to see you, baby. Hope you're enjoying the show. We're on our way to Oban. Weather's becoming inclement. Why would you want to turn Lavcast off? Asks Andy. Um, I don't think you, you really would, if I'm honest with you. Only really if there was a fault with it, or... Yeah, it probably would be a system that you'd want to run all the time. Some helicopters can shake the fillings out of your teeth, but this one's actually pretty good in real life from what I'm told. Joe Jones on YouTube says, All this chat about Air Ambulance 2 have just landed in the town next to me. Helimed 5, 9 and 6, 1. Awesome. Uh, Gillian, LavCast stands for Light Active Vibration Control System. Yeah. Like my girlfriend on uh, Twitch is saying, guys, if you don't like the weather in Scotland, just wait five minutes. What helicopter do I fly in real life? Uh, I fly the G2 gravy. The Cabri G2, my friend. You can see me fly it here. I've got a few flying videos on my channel now. I've actually just uploaded the, the third um, video in the series, Sim Pilot to Real Pilot. I'm just waiting on the flight school giving it the thumbs up. And I should be able to make it public to all you wonderful people this week. How do you mute HTOS? asks Fisher. This overhead button here, brother. So that's the normal HTOS position. If you pop it up, it quiets that down. Right, inbound to the hospital. We'll be there in about eight minutes. We're 17 miles out. Patient is still alive. Oh, Kevin! Wow! Monster donation on YouTube, dude. Thank you so much. Hey, Martin and Andy, give Mav a drink for me for stepping into John's shoes while he's on holiday. Great choice to get Mav tonight. Kevin, 
You're making me blush. You make me feel young, strong and confident, Kevin. Thank you so much for your kind words, sir. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope John's having a great holiday. Young John Feza, ladies and gentlemen, the face of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We love John. guys not far to go now I appreciate your patience I know it's not the most exciting thing just watching a helicopter fly in a straight line but at least the scenery is beautiful this is the, one of the main reasons why I love flying Microsoft Flight Simulator in Scotland especially down low VFR in a helicopter is the scenery is just jaw-droppingly beautiful never get bored of flying around this part of the world It's just unfortunate that we haven't had any um, ATC on VATSIM tonight, guys. I would have loved to have the chance to um, demonstrate to you guys, uh, as a helicopter pilot, how we work with air traffic control and how we fit into the traffic pattern and all that jazz. Maybe we could do that some other time, guys. So another point in the future, I'll come back and we'll do another guest stream. And uh, hopefully we'll get better luck with uh, VATSIM. And you guys can actually hear us chatting away with the air traffic controllers. Jambo is in Spain right now. Melting. Nice dude. Good news and bad news. I'm going to Spain in July. I am going to Alicante. Really looking forward to it. Carl asks on YouTube, what's the plan after you qualify as a helicopter pilot? Can it become a full-time job? I'm hoping to, Carl. I'm hoping to become a flying instructor on the uh, Cabri G2 and the R44. Teaching people how to fly is something I'm quite passionate about. Obviously I have a, a Twitch channel where I uh, stream flight simulators. Or more or not, I was going to say on a daily basis. That's not true. I stream as much as I can. I am a truck driver in real life, so that takes up a, a depressing amount of my time. But whenever I get free time, I try and stream, and I, uh, I always like to uh, teach people how to fly different aircraft, and I have a YouTube channel where I do tutorials and stuff like that as well, so teaching people how to fly is a bit of a, a low-key passion, so being a flying instructor in real life would be a great job for me. I think I would get a lot of a lot of satisfaction and enjoyment out of it, and yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to see students go from day zero where they're all fingers and thumbs to actually passing the skills exam and becoming a qualified helicopter pilot. Norway is fantastic, uh, says my good friend Net on Twitch. I have actually done some VFR flying in Norway. It's a little bit like Scotland on steroids. It is a beautiful country, my friend. My co-pilot's looking a little bit airsick, says Steve. This guy's a, a trained veteran, Steve. He's been there, seen it, got the t-shirt. He's looking a lot of spaced out, if I'm honest. We need to drug test this guy when we get back. Alright, not far to go to the hospital, guys. It's just over the next hill. We are just over six miles away. The patient is code 2. So he's at serious risk of injury. So we do want to make this uh, landing fast. We, we don't want to be recklessly fast, but... We do want to expedite this manoeuvre onto the pad in the most um, 
efficient but safe way possible. We don't want to risk the aircraft and crash, but we do want to make this reasonably sporty. Andy says Glasgow's online, I know, dude. They're a little bit of a big flight away, though. That's the only thing. We're all the way up in Oban. It's a shame he wasn't online when we uh, got when we actually launched the stream. That would have been handy. Now that we're getting super close, I'm going to start thinking about disengaging our upper modes. So, like I said at the beginning of the stream, guys, the autopilots on this helicopter are always on. We can engage and disengage certain modes, but the helicopter autopilot itself never gets turned off unless there's a massive failure. So we'll go ahead and decouple from heading mode, which was flying our magenta line to the destination. I will um, disengage altitude and indicated airspeed hold. So now I have control. The hospital is just up here on the right hand side of all these um, residential buildings that we can see. We are coming in with a slight tailwind, but it's only four knots, so we're not too worried about that. I will factor that in as the aircraft gets lower though. Quick fuel check, fuel is 554 kilos. We're good for fuel. Let's see if we can get a visual on the helipad. I can see it. So I know where I'm going. So I'm about to start flying the approach here. So I bring the nose up. I start to lower the collective. At the same time, I bring the cyclic back towards me so that we slow down and simultaneously go down at the same time. Airspeed's a little fast for this point. So I'm going to bring the nose up and just take a little bit more collective out. You'll hear the engine spool down as there's less of a demand for collective torque power. Good visual on the helipad. Good visual references for where I want to go into the helipad. Bringing the power back in. I'm watching the rotor RPM on the top left. I'm watching to make sure that that builds to at least 102, R uh, 102 RPM. Sorry, 102%. Get your words out, Maverick. And is stable. Engines and T's and P's are all looking okay. Uh, torque sharing is confirmed. There's no warnings from the master list. We are good to proceed. Rotor RPM stable at 101% now. Good forward trend. Landing pad is clear. Visual and the medical team on the left hand side. Good forward trend. Rate of descent is under control. Committing into the landing area. Getting ready for ground effect. Three, two, one. We are now in ground effect. Keep coming forward. Good forward trend. Come to a stop. Five, four, three, two, one. Contact. Quick scene check to make sure we're okay. Engine selected to idle. Welcome back. I do fly visually in real life, net yet. Yeah. I am not instrument rated, dude. I am a VFR student helicopter pilot. What are these guys doing? I haven't tried it in VR Red, no. I don't own a VR headset, my friend. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Matthew, Tom and Ann, Carl, Lupe, Andrew, Terry, 1234. Great name. 
Hi, Ryan. Hi, Bob. This one may be going back into the woods as well, Loopy, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they may be taking him to hospital. This guy may get lucky. Looks like this guy paid his, uh, oh, I'll say that again. This guy might not have been paying his NHS tax. Another one goes to the woods, guys. I think they're just going to stop another. No, nope, they're, they're take. Look away now, guys. Look away now. Where are you taking him? Has he been abducted? Alright guys, I think for legal ramifications we're no longer going to look at what's happening. Alright, end mission. We'll uh, beat the engines back up to flight. One and two. Submit report. Mission accomplished. All right, engines are building. Torque sharing is confirmed. Temperatures and pressures are all looking good and in the green. There's no warnings. Master list is checked. Rotor RPM stable at 102%. Fuel's checked at 542 kilos. Let's take the aircraft over to Oban Airfield, guys, which is just over to the left-hand side. We're clear on the right, we're clear on the left. The doors are closed. We'll be coming out of here with a Cat A departure. So again, we'll bring the aircraft up to a hover check. We're going to climb to 50 feet to clear the obstacles that are around the aircraft and then we're going to come backwards. Aircraft's light on the skids, looking forward, committing to flight, good entry into ground effect. The aircraft is stable, rotor RPM stable, torque sharing confirmed, T's and P's are all in the green, there's no warnings. Power's coming up above the blue line. 30, 40, 50, we'll start moving aft, start working that. Helipad into the chin window, and there it is there. 150, 160, 70, 80, 90. Decision height, clear on the right, clear on the left. T's and P's are looking good, fly away. Power back down towards the blue line. Power pedal in to bring the nose round to the left. And we are climbing away. Warnings of master list are checked. We are at the first limit indicator. Instruments are set, external lights are set. Outside air temperature is checked. Plus 12 degrees. Hey, he's very here. He's very says, why do you sound like Maverick? Oh, it's because you are Maverick. Alright guys, we'll have a little bit of fun on the way back to Oban. This would definitely lose me my helicopter license in real life. Towards the end of the stream, I always like to have a little bit of fun with the aircraft. We spend the whole stream kind of flying as realistically as possible and dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's but when it comes to the end of the stream I like to have a little bit more fun and just uh, just shake loose a little bit guys chillax watch out for those trees Mav if any of you guys ever follow my channel and watch me fly in the, the Apache gunship on Digital Combat Simulator, this is pretty reminiscent to that. We keep it low and we keep it pro. That's what we like to see. Alright, we'll make the short dash over to uh, the airfield at Oban here. right hand side, the wind is coming from the south. Go 
We'll do a little flight. We'll, we'll buzz the tower, guys. They don't call me Maverick for nothing, folks. Tower has been buzzed. Alright, we have some helipads just at the base of the tower. Traffic. Traffic. Alright, big slide and deceleration turn as we come in. Gotta be very careful here and get myself into trouble very quickly. But I've managed to get a hold of this and tail slide onto H2. Very important that you don't get too focused on the helipad itself and that you keep looking ahead of the pad for your peripheral vision. Stabilise into ground effect. Five, four, three, two, one. Contact. Welcome to Oban, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the stream, guys. This was so much fun. I really enjoyed um, meeting all of you guys and answering your questions and introducing you guys to some helicopter operations and. Uh, how we operate the air ambulance here on Vatsim. Uh, again, just to reiterate, I am not a real air ambulance pilot. I am a trainee student helicopter pilot. Unfortunately, I, I don't fly anything as fantastic as this, but I hope you still learn something. I hope I, I managed to incorporate some kind of procedural knowledge about how uh, real aviators go about operating helicopters and the kind of things that we take into consideration when we are flying the aircraft. And, uh, how we safely bring the aircraft not only into the air but uh, back onto the terra firma as well. Alright, transfer pumps are off, prime pumps are off, all the lights are off, Lavcast is set, HTOS returned to centre, the emergency floats are off, DC voltage is off and the standby battery is off. The main battery can go now and we'll pop the rotor brake on as well since we're hopping out the aircraft. Oh dude, who was that donation? Thank you so much for another donation. In fact, it was sixth day with the gifted uh, sub over there on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much, my man. Right, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed this. Thank you hugely to Martin and the whole team at Airliners Live for having me along. I really enjoyed this. I hope we get a chance to do this again sometime soon. Um, until we meet again, my friends, you make sure you look after yourself and your families. Top Gun and Volleyball, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not Scott Manley. Fly safe.